I picked up Dragon Ball Fusions on the 3DS, and I wanted to give you guys a little brief, you know, first impressions of the game. I bought it on Black Friday, and there were only a limited number of copies at Walmart. And I think what happened was that the release date got moved earlier, like twice, and I think only some stores were carrying it. So if you're unable to get your copy of Dragon Ball Fusions for the 3DS yet, no worries. There are going to be restocking it, and you can always pick it up in the next couple of weeks. But I wanted to give my thoughts on the game because people have been losing their minds over this game who have been playing it. I've even seen people on Twitter say it's the best Dragon Ball game of all time. Now, I don't know about that, but I will say this. I haven't had this much fun playing a Dragon Ball game in quite some time. And I wanted to give you guys, like I said, my first impressions. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a 3DS capture card. So I can't actually show you, like, gameplay footage, which was what I kind of wanted to do. And actually kind of show you what I was doing, but... I don't have a 3DS capture card. They're actually really expensive. There's something along the lines of like 500 bucks or something like that or 400 according to what RhymeStyle told me. And I would kind of love to do some videos on it with my own gameplay, but I, I, I don't have a capture card. Now, what you can do though, what I would recommend that you do is when you get done with my video, check out two of my favorite YouTubers when it comes to video games. Check out Kagi Films and check out D Free. Both of these guys are currently doing playthroughs and tips and things like that about the game. So if you're looking for that, you can get it on Kagi Films or D Freeze channel. So go check them out for sure. Now, my initial thoughts on this game. First of all, I want to say this. This is not your traditional Dragon Ball Z game. Most Dragon Ball games that have been coming out for the past, I don't know geez, like 15 years, are fighting games. You've got some, you know, different ones here and there, like Revenge of King Piccolo on the Wii. That was a good game. I really enjoyed that game. You've also got, like, Dragon Ball Z Legends, which is kind of a fighting game back on PS1, but not really. It was more of, like, a simulator type thing. And then, of course, you've got uh, the Legacy of Goku series, which I really, really enjoy. And by the way, there's actually talk of them doing a Legacy of Goku revival. The company that programmed Legacy of Goku wants to get the game actually made. It's not made yet, not even close, but they want to get it funded. And I really hope they do, because I really enjoy those Legacy of Goku games. My buddy Quaman has a whole playthrough of those games over on his channel, so go check him out as well. But let's talk about Dragon Ball Fusions, guys. So... This is a totally different kind of Dragon Ball game. Like I said, we I've never played a Dragon Ball game like this. This is an RPG. Pretty much it's an RPG, but it's like a hybrid RPG. It's kind of like a combination of like a action turn-based RPG mixed with like monster catching. If you've ever played Dragon Quest Monsters J or Dragon Quest Monsters Joker, you've kind of played a similar game to this. And the whole gimmick behind the fusions game is that you can take characters that wouldn't normally fuse and fuse them together with the big promotional being of course Broly and Goku, Karoli, Kakarot and Broly. That's the big um you know the big fuse character that is on the cover of the game. But the game itself plays very uniquely. It's like a combination of, I guess, like a rock, paper, scissors type thing. You know, kind of like how Pokemon did, you know, the fire, grass, and water, and things like that. But it's also got like a Final Fantasy Tactics-esque turn-based real-time strategy type thing. Maybe not real-time strategy because it's not in real time. It's turn-based. It's kind of like that. But the game takes place in a completely different world, like a different universe. You know, in the past, I've talked about how the Dragon Ball games like Xenoverse do not fit with the Dragon Ball timeline of the manga or the anime. They're branches off of these timelines, but characters like Mira and Toa and Demigra and these guys only appear in the, I call it the Dragon Ball video game universe, which is Dragon Ball Online, Dragon Ball Heroes, and Dragon Ball Xenoverse. In fact, Online started this whole thing, and then Heroes branched off of that, and then Xenoverse, of course, would branch off of that. This game has elements of the Dragon Ball video game world, but it's a totally different world, so I guess I'll name this the Dragon Ball Fusions world, where basically it's like a hybrid Similar to it's kind of similar in a way to how Xenoverse has Toki Toki City, where you've got, or in Xenoverse Two Kanton City, where you've got a city that has the different, um, I guess, sections of of different parts of the Dragon Ball world, like Namek, and you know you've got like the Capsule Corporation and the the, the capital and all that. 
this game has something similar to that where you've got like a core world and there are these portals that you open up as you progress through the game that take you to different parts of the Dragon Ball story. But it's really not the Dragon Ball story. It's really not... Like, you don't replay the Raditz fight. You don't replay the Android fight. That's not how it works. But what this game pretty much did is it took Dragon Ball characters and put it in, like, an alternate universe similar to Pokemon. It's very hard to explain, but I'm doing my best here. And the reality is that it's really a Dragon Ball game in name only. You could have easily replaced these characters with new characters, which by the way, this game does have tons of new characters that you can recruit for your team. There's over a thousand people you can recruit, and not just people from Dragon Ball, like your Gokus and Vegetas and things like that. You can recruit made up characters just for this game and every made up character has like a little mini biography like you know there's a Namekian who like used to work for Frieza and was enslaved by him and it's very interesting how they did this there's literally tons of new characters none of them really get any kind of backstory or anything the game is not character focused it's just supposed to be fun now the thing about this game that makes it very different from other Dragon Ball games as well is that it's not a one on one fighting game it's not that's not what this game is about this is all about teamwork it's all about teaming up hence you know dragon ball fusions that's what this game that's what the backbone of this game is is teamwork and having and constructing a team that will strategically win the battles for you kind of like pokemon again there's lots of similarities here which is why if you're out there and you're a fan of dragon ball and a fan of pokemon you need to get this game you need to play this game This is one of the most refreshing Dragon Ball games. I can't say it's the best Dragon Ball game ever. Some some people are saying that because it doesn't really capture the Dragon Ball, I guess, uh, what's, uh, I guess it's not really a simulator. Like Xenoverse is much more of a simulated combat system to how the series is, right? This game is more so like a game with Dragon Ball characters, but it's got Dragon Ball elements, of course, like your Key Blast. It's even got Easter eggs for the hardcore fans. Goku's mother's in the game, some obscure, obscure, Skewer references in this game as well too. Some stuff that you got to be a hardcore fan to really pick up on. You know that's in this game. So it is. It is a Dragon Ball game. Don't get me wrong, but it didn't have to be a Dragon Ball game. But it works for Dragon Ball because the big thing about the game is fusion. And not only can you do the traditional, you know, Potara fusion, and you, they, you know, and obviously you can do the finger fusion too with go tanks and whatnot but you can actually there's two new fusions in this game not just the ex fusion which is like the armband fusion where basically what that is is you can take two characters and fuse them together which is actually what they want you to do in the game is fuse characters and then kind of progress with that fused character again if you play dragon ball I'm sorry, if you played Dragon Quest Monsters Joker, you remember how in that game you take your monsters, again, Pokemon-esque elements, you capture them and you fuse them to make stronger monsters. Um, That's kind of how it is in this game, except that in this game you can actually defuse them and fuse with somebody else. So if your main character, if you want to fuse him with Goku, you can fuse him with Goku and you'll unlock abilities. But later in the game, if you change your mind, you say, you know what, I want to fuse him with, I don't know, Yamcha. You can do that as well. I really enjoy that aspect. The customization options in this game, there's literally thousands of combinations of how you get your team. And I love that. I just love that. So this game is vastly different from Xenoverse. It's a totally different kind of game, like I said. But it's so refreshing to play and so much fun. This is a fun game. When you grind out like your battles... The, the actual grinding part to get your levels up is not boring. At least not yet. It might become boring. I've only been playing it for about five days. But it's not boring at all to me. It's fun. It really is fun to play. And then as you unlock portals and open up new parts of the Dragon Ball story, like the Cell games and future uh, Capsule Corp, you see little tidbits here and there. But it's a totally different timeline. But they have so many fun Easter eggs. Like, you can recruit kid Goku on your team and then he'll meet Resurrection F Goku and then kid Goku will tell grown up Goku I'm gonna be as strong as you one day yeah you are like that's true you know what I mean I love that Uh, there's a part in the game where you fight Android 17 and 18 and 16 actually and then a little bit later on you see 18 with Krillin they're married already so again time does not exist in this alternate world of Dragon Ball and pretty much the way that the story kind of is unfolding is, you know, you go through these different, I guess, I don't know what you really even call them, I don't want to say levels, but you start in one, 
in like Capsule Corp at the bottom of this big, I guess, tree. Uh, not literally a tree, but like it's like a uh, like a, a pagoda type thing. And then you break a portal open and you move on to the next section. So as you go through the game, you open up new sections and thus, and thus you open up new characters. And then when you fight opponents, you can take their energy. There's five different kinds of energy in the game. And you need that energy to break open more portals. And you can also recruit people to your team. I'm kind of overwhelmed, to be honest with you, because one of the things that I don't like about these kind of games is that they are kind of a bitch because you don't know what combinations to use. I don't want to have to look up a guide on this shit. I want to just enjoy the game, but there's so many different options that you kind of are, you know, like, like what do I do? It's like when you play Final Fantasy V and you have so many different jobs and you're wondering which job to pick and, you know, that looks cool, that looks cool. Who do I combine with? Who do I fuse with? Just, this game is a celebration of Dragon Ball, and I'm really loving this game. I have not seen a single person say the game is not good. Yes, the game is chibified. I know that might bother some of you, and if it bothers you, well, tough shit. That's that's your problem. I've never had a problem with chibified anything. It's just a game. Like, it doesn't matter. Um, but even though it's chibified, that's only for the actual combat system. It's not really like that for the whole, whole game. Like, you see Goku... And he's his, you know, regular adult Goku. He's, he's tall, and you know, it's not, the whole thing's not really chipified. But it is meant to be like a light-hearted game. Uh, and the battle system is dope. So pretty much the way it works with the battle system is you've got your team of, you know, four or five guys. Usually, it's, you start with like three, then four, then five, and then you want to keep five guys in your team as much as possible. Then you have your opposing teams, which again could be three, four, five, maybe even two, depending on who you fight. And you take turns depending on your speed attribute. So it'll be your turn, and then you'll have a choice between doing a melee attack, a key blast, or a special move. And of course, special moves are like Kamehameha's. But not just that, you've also got special moves like powering up. You can actually do the uh, alter image technique. The game has all kinds of techniques. And certain characters like Goten and Trunks can, of course, fuse when you build up your key. So as you play the game, you can charge your key up. It eats up one of your turns, and once you have enough key you can then fuse. like, And it's pretty much one of those kind of things where you have to strategize whether or not you want to use your key, use a melee attack, or use a key blast. Some characters have stronger key blast than melee attacks. Some don't. It just depends on who's on your team. And you have to strategize, like, because they have a red, yellow, and a blue type, I guess. And red, you know, it's like the rock, paper, scissors thing. You know, you have to pick who beats what. So it's very strategic. It's fun. There's a million different ways to play. Honestly, I'm telling you now, if you have a 3DS, you need to play this game. And if you don't have a 3DS, then it's actually worth getting a 3DS, not just because the 3DS has an unbelievable library of games. I mean, if you're listening to this and you don't have a 3DS, there are, there's, there's so many great games on 3DS. Pokemon just came out. I got that too. I'm playing a little bit of it. Uh, I have, I'm have i too stuck on Fusions right now. Uh, Pokemon's great. Um, what's the other one? Zelda Link Between Worlds is the game that hooked me on freaking DS, 3DS, because... What an amazing game. Uh, Xenoblade. There's so many great games on 3DS, dude. And right now, Dragon Ball Fusions, I believe, is only about 30 bucks. And I've seen Extreme Butoden, the other 3DS Dragon Ball game, as low as 10 bucks. So it's worth paying 40 bucks for those two Dragon Ball games. And they're very different. Extreme Butoden is a 2D fighting game. Classic old school shit with some modern elements. This game is just a team RPG with monster catching elements. Check out Dragon Ball Fusions. I might come back with a full review when I get done with the video, but these are my first impressions. Thank you for subscribing to Geekdom 101. If you have, you have not, punch that subscribe button. Like the video if you like it. Check out some more of the content on my channel. I do have a Xenoverse 2 playthrough where I actually go through some of the intricacies of the story. Nobody else has done anything like this on YouTube. It's on my channel as well. And, of course, your traditional Dragon Ball, you know, examinations, analysis, and fun discussions. And a lot of them are with you. So thank you. I'll talk to you later.